Hi, my name is Fields Jackson. I'm the CEO and founder of Racing Toward Diversity magazine. Uh, this past Saturday, I had the opportunity to um, be a guest lecturer at the University of Notre, uh, Notre Dame in South Bend. Um, I had the opportunity to present a diversity, I was presenting a diversity course uh, at the University of Notre Dame. Um, it was Racing Toward Diversity, Notre Dame presentation. I was with uh, Dean Greg Crawford, and uh, Dean Greg Crawford uh, had a fascinating class about diversity, culture, religion, and science. Uh, we were uh, simulcasting from Skype. I was here in Raleigh, North Carolina, or Cary, North Carolina, and we were going via Skype to South Bend. So I'm going to basically re recreate that presentation for you today. So again, the Racing Toward Diversity Notre Dame presentation, Diversity, Culture, Religion, and Science. Again, me, Fields Jackson, founder of Racing Toward Diversity magazine, uh, with a local boy, with a Boy Scout at one of the racetracks. I think that was in uh, Dallas, Texas. But part of the class, uh, I was pro uh, projecting to a large classroom. I went over the my family. Again, I was. Um, uh, going via Skype uh, from Cary, North Carolina to uh, South Bend. But in the picture here that was taken about two years ago, uh, you see me, uh, that's Fields III, my son, uh, also my tech guy that helped me set up this presentation uh, for Saturday and also today. Next to that is my daughter, Chelsea. Chelsea was a senior that day. It was senior day at uh, UNC Chapel Hill. Chelsea was a, uh, was a tuba girl at, uh, for the band. Pretty amazing in that the tuba was about as big as my daughter, Chelsea. Uh, there's my wife, Cheryl, and next to Cheryl is our, our youngest, Austin. And again, this was about two years ago, but this was uh, uh, the Jackson 5 from Cary, North Carolina. Uh, the week before, I was actually, uh, Cheryl, uh, Austin, and I actually were at Notre Dame in South Bend uh, the week before the class, and we were visiting. We actually were at the uh, pit Notre Dame game, that, that famous game that uh, Notre Dame still was 9-0, uh, 10-0, but uh, it, was a, it was a real, real great game. But here's a picture of Austin uh, standing in front of the Lou Holtz uh, statue in front of the stadium. Here's a picture of Austin and I on the steps. I, I think this is the bookstore. Uh, this is right before the band comes in, so we were just walking through the, uh, the hollowed ground on South Bend. This was the uh, right before the game. Um, it was a uh, calmer time. It was a uh, zero zero. Great game. Great. We had great seats. Uh, and again, we were watching a game and had no idea what was going to happen uh, with uh, the Pitt and Notre Dame game. Uh, I think I'm still sore. My, my throat's still sore from screaming. Uh, this is at a point where I told the class, I think uh, this was the overtime where I just blacked out. I mean, it was it was so exciting. I just blacked out the 23 23 tie. And I, I think the class was laughing because I said, I don't know what the score was after this. I just kind of blacked out. But again, this was my intro to the presentation. So about, about us, uh, Dean Crawford asked me to talk about diversity um, to his class. I was excited to do that. And I talked a little bit about us. Uh, Racing Toward Diversity magazine showcases the best diversity efforts and initiatives being made today. Written with business and educational audiences in mind, stories highlight messages from influential leaders in their organization. With our concentration on drawing, drawing strong uh, content through our social media platforms, uh, Racing to Diversity and our social media networks reach about 1.2 uh, million readers. Again, I asked the class, and I even asked people watching the video, uh, if you like, follow me on Fleejack. That's my Twitter handle, F-L-E-E-J-A-C-K, and at race, the number two, diversity. Uh, so please, if you follow me, I will definitely follow you back. But we're also on Facebook and LinkedIn. A couple of shots about the magazine. Again, Racing Toy Diversity Magazine, a quarterly publication. Uh, this is one of our issues that we did in spring. Uh, that was uh, on the cover was honoring Dr. Dorothy Height. Uh, Dr. Height was instrumental, a big part of the civil rights movement. We also did a, a piece on Georgetown University uh, and on the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. This was an issue we did on, uh, it was the winter of 2010. This was one of our most popular issues. We actually sold this one out. We did uh, the diversity efforts in the NFL. We also did a piece on uh, a 2010 census and how we thought that uh, that actual census uh, was going to help shape 
the demographics, elections, and, and, and things to come. And it's, uh, again, uh, that was one of the issues we did in, uh, for our winter issue. Here's an issue we did uh, in winter 2011, and this was, uh, we focused on uh, the Hispanic, uh, not Hispanic, but the Asian um, uh, Chamber of Commerce, the Pan U.S. Pan-Asian American Chamber of Commerce. But again, this was sort of like our White House issue where we were focusing on uh, global issues. Again, part of this was to show the class that, you know, we, we are looking at global diversity. Um, we are looking at all aspects from business to education, et cetera. So we, we move around quite a bit. This issue was uh, one we did on Wall Street. The gentleman you see on the cover, his name is uh, Richard Ketchum. Uh, Mr. Ketchum was the ex-CEO of the New York Stock Exchange's um, regulatory uh, division. He is now the CEO of a group called FINRA. Uh, you'll notice, we'll, we'll talk about Richard a little bit later on, uh, we had the opportunity to have a, a, an event at the New York Stock Exchange, which we were honored to have Richard uh, be our keynote speaker. But part of what I told the class was that, you know, we look at all aspects uh, for diversity, um, uh, from financial literacy to um, inner city to colleges, universities, religion. We take a, a look at all the positive aspects of diversity and how it's uh, shaping our global economy. Um, this is a... Um, this is a video. We talked about how we got started and basically how we got started uh, it, back in 2008. Um, uh, there's a gentleman named Robert Marchman. You'll hear that name uh, throughout the presentation. Robert and I actually went to school together uh, at Allegheny College. Uh, but Robert was at that time the executive vice president of regulatory for the New York Stock Exchange. He was also chairman of the diversity council for the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, at that time, uh, Robert was looking to celebrate the 10-year anniversary of the Diversity Council at the New York Stock Exchange. And Robert wanted to have sort of like a breakout event uh, for that. He wanted to sort of really have a, uh, something to signify all the achievements that they had made at the New York Stock Exchange. So we got to talking, and he came to me, and I said, well, Robert, you know you're talking to me. And, and back in college, I was sort of like the, uh, the crazy idea guy. But I said, well, Robert, let me think about it a, a couple days, and, and I'll come back to you with my thoughts. Uh, got back to Robert, and my thought was, um, why not have, uh, in, in February is actually Black History Month. I said, why not celebrate um, your achievements at the Diversity Council, at the New York Stock Exchange, um, celebrating Black History Month with NASCAR? And Robert said, um, NASCAR, well hmm, NASCAR is not really known for its diversity efforts. I said, well, I know that, but there are some people that are actually doing some tremendous things uh, in, 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 in NASCAR. So why not? I, I know Joe Gibbs, and at that point, Joe Gibbs had a, um, uh, you know, he's a world champion uh, team. He had, a, he had won, I think, a couple of championships. But at that time, he had an African-American driver named Mark Davis. I said, why not I bounce this off Joe and uh, see if he'd be open to the idea. Joe was open to the idea. Uh, Joe actually uh, contacted some of his sponsors, Interstate Battery, Home Depot, Coca-Cola, uh, FedEx, and they, we had a, uh, a bell ringing at the New York Stock Exchange celebrating um, uh, uh, Black History Month and, and the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, let me play the video for you. Now I'm going to do that right now. Hey everybody, it's George Kevin Jordan here with Blue Spotlight. Here to celebrate a tremendous achievement and a momentous occasion. Mark Davis is about to ring the bell. It's four minutes to four right now. The excitement is just unbearable. I can't wait to go inside. Come on, let's go inside.
Mark, why don't you just tell me a little bit about your racing background, how you got interested in racing? Oh, well, I've been racing for 12 years now, and I started out when I was six years old with uh, BMX bikes and four midget cars, and uh, started out and won my first race four midgets, and just left ahead and found them now. Uh, I got to the Town Jr. Basin two years ago, it's my third year at the uh, one won six late model races, and now we're in the uh, Camping Northeast East Series. For and, uh, looking to look at the nationwide series this year. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, you know, a lot of people um, are already saying um, they want to follow in your footsteps and they want to be a role model. How does it feel to be a role model, um, you know, in racing, uh, as an African-American male, and just also as a racer, you're making history, man. It's cool. Uh, it's, it's hard for me to think about sometimes. I'm, I'm only 17 years old, and I'm about to have fun, but uh, there's a whole lot of history behind it, and uh, there's a lot of opportunities for me to keep the door open for more minorities to come behind me, and uh, also to come uh, uh, keep the door open, and some looking forward to it. Awesome. Well, we really, really appreciate your time. Uh, appreciate Thank you. Mark Davis, NASCAR. I'm a witness to history. Right here, Mark Davis, a young African-American development driver, is making history. He's here not only ringing the bell at the New York Stock Exchange, but he's ringing in a new era, the post-Obama era, where young African-Americans can dream whatever dream they want to and make those dreams come true. Mr. Davis is already a young hero and an inspiration to many young people, and we're here celebrating not only this monumentous occasion, but also celebrating African-Americans everywhere. I'm George Kevin Jordan. Blue spot.